We Were Liars, written by E. Lockhart, read by Brittany George. Chapter 62. A few evenings later, Claremont Cocktail Hour. It began at 6 or 6.30, depending on when people wandered up the hill to the big house. The cook was fixing supper and had set out salmon mousse and little flowery crackers. I went past her and pulled a bottle of white wine from the fridge for the aunties. The littles, having been down at Big Beach all afternoon, were being forced into showers in fresh clothes by Gat, Johnny, and Mirren at Redgate, where there was an outdoor shower. Mummy, Bess, and Carrie sat around Claremont coffee table. I bought wine glasses for the aunts as Grandad entered. So, Penny, he said, pouring himself bourbon from the decanter of the sideboard. How are you and Katie doing in Windermere this year, with the change of circumstances? Bess is worried you're lonely. I didn't say that, said Bess. Carrie narrowed her eyes. Yes, you did, Grandad said to Bess. He motioned for me to sit down. You talked about the five bedrooms, the renovated kitchen, and how Penny's alone and won't need it. Did you, Bess? Mummy drew a breath. Bess didn't reply. She bit her lip and looked out the view. We're not lonely, Mummy told Grandad. We adore Windermere, don't we, Katie? Grandad beamed at me. You okay there, Cadence? I knew what I was supposed to say. I'm more than okay there. I'm fantastic. I love Windermere because you built it specially for Mummy. I want to raise my own children there and my, grand ch and my children's children. You are so excellent, Grandad. You are the patriarch and I revere you. I am so glad I am a Sinclair. This is the best family in America. Not in those words, but I was meant to help Mummy keep the house by telling that my grandfather that he was a big man and that he was the cause of our happiness and by reminding him that I was the future of the family, that all American Sinclairs would perpetrate ourselves, tall and white and beautiful and rich, if only he'd let Mummy and me stay in Windermere. I was supposed to make Grandad feel in control when his world was spinning because Gran had died. I was to beg him by praising him, never acknowledging the aggression behind his question. My mother and her sisters were dependent on Grandad and his money. They had the best educations, a thousand chances, a thousand connections, and still they ended up unstable to support themselves. None of them did anything useful in the world, nothing necessary, nothing brave. They were still little girls trying to get in good with Daddy. He was their bread and butter, their cream and honey too. It's too big for us. I told Grandad. No one spoke as I left the room. Chapter 63 Mummy and I were silent on the walk back to Windermere after supper. Once the door shut behind us, she turned on me. Why didn't you back me with your grandfather? Do you want us to lose this house? We don't need it. I picked the paint, the tiles. I hung the flag from the porch. It's five bedrooms. We thought we'd have a bigger family. Mummy's face got tight. But it didn't work out that way. It doesn't mean I don't deserve the house. Mirren and those guys could use the room. This is my house. You can't expect me to give it up because Bess had too many children and left her husband. You can't think it's okay for her to snatch it from me. This is our place, Cadence. We've got to look out for ourselves. Can you hear yourself? I snapped. You have a trust fund. What does that have anything to do with it? Some people have nothing. We have everything. The only person who used the family money for charity was Gran. Now she's gone and all anyone's ever worried about is her pearls, her ornaments, and her real estate. Nobody is trying to use the money for good. Nobody is trying to make the world any better. Mummy stood up. You're filled with superiority, aren't you? You think you understand the world so much better than I do. I've heard Gat talking. I've seen you eating up his words like ice cream off a spoon. But you haven't paid bills. You haven't had a family. You owned property, seen the world. You have no idea what you're talking about, and yet you do nothing to pass judgment. You are ripping up the family because you think you deserve the prettiest house. Mummy walked to the foot of the stairs. You go back to Claremont tomorrow. You tell Grandad how much you love Windermere. Tell him you want to raise your own kids, spending the summers here. You tell him. No. You should stand up to him. Tell him to stop manipulating all of you. He is only acting like this because you, because he's sad about Gran. Can't you tell? Can't you help him, or get a job so his money doesn't matter, or give the house to Bess? Listen to me, young lady. Mummy's voice was silly. 
You go and talk to Grandad about Windermere, or I will send you to Colorado with your father for the rest of the summer. I'll do it tomorrow, I swear. I'll take you to the airport first thing. You won't see that boyfriend of yours again, understand? She had me there. She knew about me and Gat, and she would take him away. Would take him away. I was in love. I promised whatever she asked. When I told Grandad how much I adored the house, he smiled and said that he knew someday I'd have beautiful children. Then he said Bess was grasping wrench and that he had no intentions of giving her my house. But later, Marin told me he had promised Windermere to Bess. I'll take care of you, he said. Just give me a little time to get Penny out. Thanks for reading with me today. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe.